Hello, and thank you for joining our webinar. I'm Kara Choate, and I'll be assisting during today's session. Um, before we get started, I wanted to go over a few housekeeping items. All participants on today's call are placed on mute. To ask a question, please use the Ask a Question feature located on the bottom left of your screen. And additionally, this session is being recorded and you will be able to access the recording by using the link you registered with. I'd now like to take a moment to introduce Nicole Kotabende, uh, Director of HCM Business Development. She will be presenting Heartland's payroll solutions to you all. Wonderful, thanks so much, Kara. And it is so wonderful to be with everyone today, especially during the holiday season. I really appreciate you for taking this next hour or so, maybe a little less with me and just walking alongside all of the product offerings that we have for you. I really hope that you learn something from this. I hope there are a few good key takeaways that you have, and maybe you're interested in the software afterwards, or maybe it really just gets you going and, want, and makes you wanna really evaluate the current processes that you have in place. So what I'm gonna do first is go through a quick PowerPoint demo and different slides. I'm then gonna kick it over to an actual software demo and as, as mentioned, if you have any questions, please hold them, keep them in the chat. And I do believe we should have at least 10 minutes or so for some live Q&A in the end. If you can't get to me at that point, please, you can contact us. We'll make sure that we get any of your questions answered. And if you're not joining us live, thank you again for taking some time to take a look and dig into what we have going with um, everyone. And I really do hope you learn something and get something out of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Give me just a moment. All right, so let's get started. Quick agenda, who is Heartland? You know Practice Perfect, you know GPI, who is Heartland and how do we, how, how are we involved with both companies? Um, TIS the season, HCM statistics and some facts, what sets us apart and then the good old software demo for you. Who is Heartland? So you may have heard of us, you may have not. We like to say we're the biggest payroll company you might not have heard of, but we actually joined the payroll space back in 1999. We saw that there was really an opportunity to serve an underserved market. And what we really saw was there wasn't a lot of one-to-one -one interaction and handholding with regard to payroll and all the complexities with taxes, liability, compliance. I'm sure if you're on this call, you might know a thing or two about that. Um, what happened in 2016 is Global Payments actually bought Heartland to expand their portfolio. Really nice strategic move on their end so that they could do things like join GPI and Heartland together as one. We went through a merger in the beginning of this year. So you're probably familiar with GPI on the card side. And now GPI is able to extend their offerings to you through Practice Perfect. All right, so another quick overview on Heartland. Who are we? We have over 350 sales representatives in the payroll space. We issue about 1.7 million checks per month. We have over 50,000 clients currently across all 50 states. We have over 400 client and support members. So that's everything from implementation with your account to your actual day-to-day -day payroll processor. And then we are publicly traded, which a lot of people like. So. You can go in and take a look and see how we're doing. Um, so tis the season, I wanted to start with this. Why would you switch payroll companies? Why would you look at things like HR and time and attendance in Q4? And then again, in Q1. So right now it's payroll season. We like to say it's winter, fall, whatever, but it's also payroll season. So it's about 30 or so percent of business owners, people in HR, people on the admin team that are actually evaluating their processes to say, oh man, we've seen this price hike every year for the last five years, or I really can't stand this gal I'm talking to, we wanna move, or maybe we've outgrown the software, or maybe it's that, you know, Uncle Bob's been doing our payroll forever and he's, he's a CPA and he's ready to retire. And we're kind of forced into looking elsewhere. The reason why it's great to start in Q4 is for the reason, like I mentioned with Bob, let's say. So maybe you have someone who's been doing it by hand in house, and maybe it's a little messy. Maybe if the labor board or the IRS showed up to perform an audit, 
you wouldn't feel as easy as you'd like to feel going into that. So um, what's really nice is that at any point in time, at any point during the year, when you do switch over, we will do a, an audit of that entire year's payroll. So we'll go back to Jan 1. It's a big bonus if you're starting in December because then you can kind of breathe and you can kind of relax knowing that we are performing that audit before the IRS would, and we will take over liability for the entire calendar year. The other nice piece to that is that there will only be one W-2 issued. You wouldn't have one from another payroll company or whatever system you're using and then one from us. It would simply be from us. But with that being said, it's the holidays, right? A lot of people are busy. A lot of people are like, okay, yeah, let's take a look at this. It gets pushed into January. So Q1 is actually, January in particular, is the best time to switch because it's the clean start of a new year. We're not getting any... Uh, quarterlies, any any 941s, we're not capturing what we would typically get during a Q4 transition. So Q1 is really good for people who say, you know, our system's okay, but we really want to explore more options, or we're really interested in, you know, taking it a step up. We want to incorporate things like direct deposit. We want our employees to have a mobile app so they can take a look at their pay stubs on their app and not bother me because there goes, you know, a couple hours every month or so of me retrieving pay stubs and showing people that I'm et cetera. So quick reality check. I'm sure everyone listening now has, we've all been through COVID. We've all been through the pandemic. We've seen the ups, we've seen the downs. We've seen things like employer retention be kind of tough. We've seen now in the market, you know, what happened last October where the federal aid went away, the extra federal aid with regard to unemployment went away, we thought we'd see people coming in droves to apply, right? Everything's easy. We're going to hire the best talent, retain them. But that didn't really happen. And there's still a lot of people out there that aren't working. So what that means for employers is that it's really hard for them to attract and retain the type of talent that they want and that they want to carry on through their business and be successful with. So about 75%. So if we take a look at number one. Number two says, okay, we've hired these people, but as they're going through the onboarding process, as they're completing their paperwork, going through trainings, et cetera, it's not really up to par. It's not really what they thought it would be. And that already is putting a bad taste in their mouth prior to actually engaging in their job duties. So it's almost 90% of new hires say, eh, it's not working out. Number three, I hope nobody has heard of this on this call. I'm gonna go into it a little bit. I won't go into it too much, but we can definitely do another session or you can contact me and I can teach you a little more or you can Google it, but it is the work opportunity tax credit. If you have never heard of this before, let's take 90 seconds and explain it. So back in 1996, the government said, hey, there are different categories of people. Some of them are veterans. Some might have been on unemployment for quite a long time, 27 weeks or more. Maybe they're on food stamps or maybe they have committed a crime. These people are typically receiving some form of assistance from the government, some sort of federal aid. And we want to incentivize an employer for hiring someone from one of these categories. So what, that's the work opportunity tax credit and that's when it was born. So what really happened is they, they, um, got this out into the world, right? So the work opportunity tax credit and the big giant corporations took advantage of it because it is really cumbersome. There's a lot of paperwork. There is a 28 day timeline as far as getting everything in, submitted, et cetera. And so what happened is the Targets, the Walmarts, the Costco's, Disney, all of these people actually have in-house workers processing the tax credit, monitoring it. So the smaller guys with just a few employees really didn't get to capitalize on it as much because they're either paying a pretty big fee or they, they didn't even know about it. And so what we did is we actually incorporated tax credit screening into our software that, so that we can help you identify before you even engage with a candidate who's applied for a job, whether or not they may be eligible for that tax credit. What is that tax credit? It can range between $2,400 and $9,600 and we will help do everything except file for it at the end of the year or the beginning of the following year. That is your CPA, your tax preparer, but I'll get into that a little bit more um, as we carry on. Last one, time theft. You may know of someone who's stolen time. You may have done it yourself, working at a restaurant in college, maybe some other people in the room have, but it happens and it happens daily and it happens 
a lot. And so what time theft really means is someone who's hourly clocking in and clocking out, they might have had their buddy clock in for them because they're in the Starbucks drive through they're getting that coffee. They're not there. They're not performing their jobs. Or maybe they have, they don't use a time clock. They're like, oh yeah, I come in nine to five. That's, that's when I come in. But it's 942 when they're sitting at their desk and actually working. Or it's 412 that they've left the office, right? So this accumulates over the year and can really have a tremendous impact on employers and their bottom line when it comes to what they're paying out for. It can be a make it or break it depending upon how frequent people are stealing time. As you can see collectively across the country, about $11 billion, so that's a lot of money. How we help solve these people problems. You'll notice I didn't mention payroll, right? Payroll is awesome. We have a great payroll product, but I really want to speak to the relevance of our other products that we have and show you how all of them kind of coupled together can really help the practice and really help them excel. The other nice piece is that if you say, Nicole, well, we really love our payroll provider, it's it's my husband or it's my wife or my dad or my mom, great, you don't have to switch payroll. You might just like the time and attendance piece or you might just like the hiring and onboarding portion that'll really help you get up and running for the new year. Every single module I'm showing you can actually be taken apart and be sold as a standalone product. The beauty of pairing them with payroll is that they integrate, everything is is there and there's not any duplicate entry where you're entering employee names in one system and time and attendance everything we do have a centralized point which would end up being whatever you're using if it's the payroll it'll be that if you're using time and attendance and hiring and onboarding it's going to be time and attendance so there's not a lot of if any double entry so how we solve these problems the first one would be through our applicant tracking and hiring software Second's going to be through our employee onboarding, which I love. I'm, I'm really excited to demo that. Third would be through us, again, identifying those, those we call it WOTC, a WOTC eligible candidate, and then going through everything with you. And then lastly, through time and attendance. And you see HCM, and if I haven't defined it already, HCM stands for Human Capital Management. How are you managing your people? Is it something that's really old school, it's sort of an antiquated model, antiquated clock, maybe your handwriting checks, we don't know, but we want to help you as much as possible to expedite these processes, create efficiency within the workplace, and really just hopefully scale the business as, as you see needed and as desired. Here is another view of the software. So I just wanted to show you really just the natural trajectory of how somebody is hired. So obviously they're going to go through the applicant tracking system, they're going to post to job boards, they're going to make sure if they'd like background checks that those are run. We're going to have e-verify for those who would like to utilize that. That's integrated into the system, electronic onboarding, the tax credits, that's really the hiring piece. Then of course there's an HR component. I myself am in California, I don't know if anyone else on the call is in California, but it's, it's tough here, it's rough. I really feel for employers because people are out to get you and, and, and it's tough. So with ever changing laws, policies, rules, and regulations, we do have varying levels of HR that can help you with everything from a handbook wizard to a SHRM certified specialist that you can pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I've got a situation. Can you please help me and advise me on the best way to handle that? Let's kick it over to the middle, our time and attendance. It, it's more than just clocking in and clocking out. So some of you on this call may be saying, well, Okay, I've got my six salaried people and I have one person she clocks in and clocks out. Doesn't matter because with PTO, with scheduling, with a lot of different types of things that fall under the umbrella of the time and attendance, there is something for everyone. We've had salary only um, companies that say, hey, I've been using an Excel spreadsheet to calculate my employees PTO and sick time and it's a nightmare and I get nervous when I think about the labor board. So. Lots of really fun pieces there. And I'll show you too how the world is really your oyster when it comes to time and attendance and how you can only choose bits and pieces as you see need, needed, as you see fit, I should say. Um, then we take a look at the payroll product. So payroll, we will process your payroll in a timely manner. We can do next day checks. I know that's a really big question. We get a lot of the time, of course, direct deposit is, is facilitated. You do have a single point of contact, which is really important, and I'll get into that a little later. 
but um, the employees also have access. So they can actually go in. We have a really nice, easy to use um, mobile app that I'll show you a couple of screens on too, where if I'm an employee and I, I hate Bank of America and I just moved to Citibank, I can go in myself. I can cancel that Bank of America direct deposit. I can enter my city information without having to involve one, two, sometimes three people to get all of that process. It's done through the mobile app or on the self service center. Lastly, if you do choose to offer benefits, we have integrations built with Ease and Navigator, which are the top two benefits administration platforms in the United States. I'm not going to get into that piece today, but I just wanted you to know it's there should you ever want to um, integrate or, or be curious about it. All right, I wanted to get into what sets us apart before I actually go through the demo so you can have this in the back of your mind as you're viewing the software. First thing everybody loves is a three-year price lock. So the price that you are quoted that you end up signing an agreement for, you get that price for the next three years. Um, lots of times competitors will increase rates and they're typically at the anniversary date of when you signed up. So instead of flowers and chocolates, you're getting a price hike. Hopefully it's not bad if you're experiencing this, but it does happen. Um, it's very common. Uh, the other nice thing too is when we say three-year price lock, I don't want to confuse you with you thinking that that's a three-year contract. You are free to leave at any time. We ask that you give us a 30-day notice, but you really don't need to. You can leave. Um, number two, the dedicated payroll specialist. So again, I'm actually friends with a few of them, and one in particular that that I'm friends with, she loves helping the little guys. So you'll see, you know, we have clients with hundreds, even thousands of employees. But the, the majority have between 10 and 50. That's really our sweet spot. Um, not to say we don't do one, two, three, four, but we, we really love helping the little guys, helping people who have questions, who don't feel like going through an email or going through an FAQ and just really need that handholding. We really have prided ourselves on, on maintaining that level of service since 1999. Now everything, you get a bot, you get a robot, chat this, chat that, but we still have the human connection if needed. Um, our reps are paid residually. I do like to bring this up because they, many times, many payroll companies and other companies, you know, you get your one-time payment, cool, you met your quota, you're on to the next, right? Our reps are paid in the same way an insurance agent would be paid, right? So they're making their residuals month over month. So that really tells me two things. It tells me that they're not gonna really upsell you and oversell you because they know you'll leave. And then number two, they have a vested interest in actually answering any phone calls, being there for you and you know, introducing another software component that you have questions on and being there for you. So I really, really respect and, and love that they are paid that way. Number four, this is SaaS, right? So it's software. This is evolving. So as we release updates, um, as we make enhancements, as we have new integrations that are built within the platform, you're the first to know. And there's no hardware. There's no nothing you have to deal with. It's just all right there for you. Lastly, the work opportunity tax credit and employee retention tax credit are two that we're really big on. The employee retention tax credit, I'm not going to talk to uh, today, but if you do have any questions, let us know. It's really more about the work opportunity tax credit. Again, with our pre and post screening and the tax package reports that we send out, which I'll show you in just a moment. All right, quick testimonial, quick and easy, great service. Our payroll is processed in a timely manner. It's payroll, right? This is we're we're not the doctors. We're not someone. You know, you're not assessing our bedside manner. What do you want? You want great service and payroll processed in an efficient manner. With that being said, I'm gonna kick it over into the demo. All right. So right here, what you see would be your landing page. You have logged into the system. You see on the left-hand side, current job postings, maybe some interviews you might have at the bottom, applicant tracking right there in the middle, and then the work opportunity tax credit. Hopefully you're reviewing and signing e-form 2848, which allows us to go ahead and contact any state workforce agencies, um, anyone we need to get in contact with with regard to your employee who would be receiving the tax credit. And it's actually not them receiving it, it would be you, but they would be the ones that are eligible, so correction there. So I'm just gonna walk you through posting a job. So let's say 
it's January, we're ready, we need a new medical assistant, we're going through just all of the standard notions. I do want to note here, what's really nice is that you can build your own application, which I think is key. You'll then get to determine what is marked necessary, um, what is required on that. If you do want, you know, education, former work experience, everything, you build your own. I been a while since I've applied for a job, but I remember back in uh, my 20s getting that paper. They're, they're tearing off the paper. They bought this this application at Office Depot, and it's it's on a stack, and it's just a pad, and it's so generic, right? So you're really able to customize this to make what you need work for you. So again, we're filling out all the basic information. Step two, huge differentiator, game changer. I hope this. If any of you decide to move forward, you absolutely use this feature, but. These are pre-screening questions that will be included in the application process. So maybe I want to ask, maybe I'm hiring for a receptionist, let's just say, and they're going to be on the phones all day, and I want to make sure that they present themselves well, that they speak eloquently, that, that they can get the message across. So maybe I ask three questions and have them answer via audio. And again, this is before I've even engaged with the client. This is something that they're doing through the application process. Continue to step three. We're gonna just take a quick peek, make sure everything looks good, and we are publishing the job post. Now you're probably wondering where that went. It's automatically going to indeed.com, it's going to Glassdoor, and it will now be in the Google search engine when the job is searched for. Some people say, oh, that's great, that's all I needed. Some people say, oh, well, you know, I need a little more. LinkedIn really works for us, or we, we're big fans of Monster, or maybe we wanna get really um, niche and get into a targeted job where maybe there's one for, I don't know, acupuncturists that we really love going to. That's where you can utilize any of the additional options that we have right here. Job target is an aggregate job board where they're gonna have over 25,000 that you can actually say, okay, cool, I like that. There will be an additional charge for most of these. As I mentioned, the first three are what ends up being populated for free. Um, but again, it takes just a couple of minutes to link your LinkedIn account. Same thing with Craig, Craigslist. And then if you have Monster Career Builder as well, maybe you want an iframe and you want to put it on your own careers page on your own website. Of course, we have that. Another thing that is really, really well received with all of our employers really that are utilizing it is the text to apply concept. This can even be put on a website if you'd like, but what we really suggest is if you're at a job fair and you have little three by five cards, or maybe this is just something small you put in the window, you have your logo right there, it's really clean. Maybe somebody walks in and asks for a paper application and you say, oh, we don't do paper anymore, here, take this, or it's on the back of your business card, on a moving vehicle, whatever it is, we allow people to retrieve your application. And again, this could be your custom application via QR code or just a simple few numbers that you're able to text. What does it look like? So, hey, I'm excited. I really want to apply for this job. How am I applying? I'm either using a computer or I learned it's like 55% of people aged, I think it was 25 to like 50 something are applying for jobs on their phones now. So that's why I like to bring up the phone. So what's happening, right? Maybe the employer said, okay, you can use your existing Indeed account to, to apply or LinkedIn. I'm, I'm a little more relaxed in that. I still want you answering the question. So you're going to hit apply now. Maybe you're attaching a cover letter or resume. Maybe you're, you're utilizing Dropbox. Here is an example of those pre-screen questions that you asked that are custom to, again, your specific job post that you have out there and your practice, how that's working. We are going to go ahead and hit continue. And right here, boom, this is the jackpot. So this is the work opportunity tax credit assessment. There's eight questions that go through it really hopefully quickly. Have you ever worked for this employer before? Have you received conditional certification? They go through all of the questions. And then as an employer or as admin, whoever is in the system, and just to note, you can have multiple users with totally different access and levels of permission. It's completely customizable. But you're able to say, okay, wow, we got a lot of people that applied for this job. I don't have the time. We're short staffed as it is. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is use the filtering capability. I personally believe this to be the number one feature of the entire applicant tracking onboarding software. But I'm gonna say, you know what? 
I asked a few really important pre-screening questions. I want to make sure that people have answered favorably to those. And what the heck? I heard about this work opportunity tax credit from Nicole. What do I have to lose? I still want to make sure I interview that candidate and I like them and that they're, they're good for the job, right? So I'm going to click on that. And based on those questions, you'll see that list is greatly condensed. This is where I highly recommend that employers start with their interviews. It's simply just starting with their interviews because they've answered favorably to those questions and they may provide a work opportunity tax credit for the employer. And just to dive into the work opportunity tax credit a little bit more, it is a dollar for dollar offset against employer's tax liability. Let's say you owe the IRS $50,000 come tax time and you've utilized the Heartland software and hey, maybe it was $5,000, let's say, between two employees that you hired that you're able to go ahead and capitalize on, you can either then pay the IRS $45,000 or you can carry it forward up to 20 years and keep it as an asset on your books. If you ever want to sell, you can accumulate them over the time or you can kick it back a year. So if you're in over your head from the previous year, you can go ahead and apply it to the previous year's taxes. So that's really what the, the credit will allow for. So, wow, not, not bad. We have a few people that already are promising. I don't even know who they are. I'm going to click on them right now. I'm going to start with Meredith. What can I do, right? Several things. I can add some notes on her. Maybe I just want to quickly message her. I also maybe want to shoot her a text message. You can enable the text messaging through the platform as well. Um, maybe I want to schedule an interview. This was huge during COVID, as we know. Coming back again, unfortunately, but, um, you know, things are a little lighter. It seems not as, as severe symptoms. So I know we're all still trying to get everything done and, and work around it. But the fact that you can go through a preliminary interview, let's say just the very first one, maybe you have five people you're going to take through this first round. Maybe we just want them virtually done, right? We don't want to bother with bringing people in. We know a few of them live far away. It's cold. It's snowing. Um, we're able to go ahead and choose either the virtual phone or in-person option. And again, if I am the employer, I am on the administrative team, I'm taking a look at my calendar, I'm offering multiple times the dates. And then, bonus, if I'm using an Apple calendar, an Outlook calendar, or a Google calendar, I can automatically sync that with my calendar. So I'm not here sending out the invitation, waiting for them to accept, and then double entry into my calendar. Once they accept, it's gonna be, it's gonna shoot over to my calendar directly. We're really happy with that integration. All right, so. Again, lots of stuff you can do with the candidates, but just for lack of time, I'm gonna go over and let's say we, we love Meredith. We wanna either send her an offer letter template that we have in the system. Maybe you have your own you'd like to send and we are ready to hire her. We've now left the applicant tracking and hiring. We're moving to the onboarding. And what's really nice is I can see in real time all of the forms that my new applicants or my new employees, I should say, have filled out. So I can see, okay, good job, Meredith. You know, this her start date's then. We sent this out the day before. She's done everything. Fantastic. What is Meredith doing? How does she have access to these forms? It's simple. She's either using a computer or a mobile device. She's sitting at home and she's going through the notions, right? So right here, and I actually did this myself when I when I was it's been five years now. I've been with the company. So I sat at a kitchen table in Dallas, Texas, visiting a friend. I was like, hey, I got this new job. I'm ready to just kind of go through all the paperwork. I'll just do it here. I wasn't on the clock. Nobody was babysitting me. And I went through every single form. And the beauty of this is that we do not let them move on to the next form until all mandatory fields are complete. If you're on this call and you've ever either been on the administrative side or just on the employee side where someone comes back to you and says, oh, well, you didn't add these up on your W-4 or you need... It, it happens, right? There's just so many things you forget. You don't do everything and you have to deal with that. And it's just a nightmare. So we made sure that we are alleviating all of that. And so then when we take a look here, this guy, Reinhold Stifel, he has quite a few things he hasn't done, right? So we can go ahead and make sure that we've already sent an auto email, to nudge him every couple of days. And what it looks like from the manage onboarding section is it's really, it's, I think it's fun. So if you have, let's say, two or three different types of employees you're hiring and they don't all share the same paperwork, 
you can go ahead and create as many templates as you want so that you just simply select each template as soon as you're ready to hire for that specific position and it's populated with everything you need so maybe what you need are them to acknowledge and sign the handbook payroll information maybe you are implementing e-verify as we scroll down maybe you want their driver's license here's that reminder you can also upload your own documents and you will simply drag and drop anywhere they need to be initialed, signed, dated, anything. So we really love that feature too. That was actually a newer feature that came out within the last year. Um, you manage your onboarding packages. You'll have everything there. Here's an example, manager, sample package, et cetera. So I love the fact that you can do that. Last thing I wanna show you before getting into time and attendance, we're doing pretty good on time, um, is the work opportunity tax credit section. So let's say that you've hired six people this year. On average, it's about 20 to 25% of hourly employees that will qualify for this. It's a little lower with salary, but that doesn't mean that a ton of salary people don't qualify for the tax credit as well. But I know if I was an employer, what I would really be interested in is this screen right here, because as you probably imagine, it's not a tax credit that's just handed out right away. You hired Joe, Joe worked one hour and he left the company, right? It does take time to earn them. So the employees must work a minimum of 120 hours and then that's when the tax credit actually kicks in. So they will have been earning throughout those, you know, from hour one and on, but you may receive a little lower than $2,400. Maybe they quit and you're getting, I don't know, $1,800 instead. But this screen right here allows you to view the progress of each employee, which I think is so cool because it's tied to payroll. If you aren't using the payroll, then you can still go ahead and upload just a couple of uh, payroll data points, but you'll be able to see as they progress where they are now and how long it will take to get that tax credit actualized. What, if you're using this and you do have somebody that is eligible the following year, January 31st, sooner sometimes too, um, you will receive a tax package report. This person earned $26,000, not bad. We will show you then a couple of pages letting you know how the tax credits accrue. There are two different categories between 25 and 40%. There's also a 50% category dedicated to one tax credit. It gets pretty involved, but we do all that, so don't have to worry about it. When you take a look at the third page, this is what is really gonna matter to your CPA or your tax preparer enrolled agent, whoever you're working with. They, we show them line item by line item what needs to be filled out on the one additional tax form that will be filed, which is the 5884. And I myself, I used to sell payroll a lot with um, another payroll company, and I went to um, some of these CPAs that I was working with, and I was like, hey, are you guys filling these out a lot? They're like, oh, yeah, you know, we do sometimes, but they know about this tax credit, but they have no way of monitoring it and staying up to date, especially because it's a 28 day timeline from when you hire someone. So kind of like a skeleton in their closet. A lot of times they're like, Oh yeah, I know about this, but I don't act proactively inform all of my, my clients about it. So when this is brought to them to say, Hey, look, man, we, we made $26,000 this year. Here's what you have to fill out. It, it, it's really well received on their end and, and they're really happy to help out. All right, so I'm gonna skip over to time and attendance and try to take about 10 to 15 more minutes before we open it up. All right, so time and attendance. This software is four years old. I've seen it, I, I saw it be built from the ground up. I've seen the improvements, enhancements. It's absolutely stellar. I love hearing about the customer success stories that we have with it and just ways that we cut down admin time drastically between scheduling and really I'm telling you hey time off vacation all of that especially when you get upwards of you know five six seven eight nine employees it starts to be a little cumbersome and especially if you're not tracking it correctly so as far as an employee is concerned there are tons of different ways not tons it's, there's four four different ways they can clock in and clock out the first would be via an iPad and again this is going to come from the employer right so the employer is going to say okay well, we really want the people in the office to be clocking in and out from the iPad right by the front door. That's where we're gonna put it. And then we have two remote people. So we'll just let them clock in from their computers, right? You can do, you can mix and match. We have phone capability, but really what we allow is them to utilize facial recognition technology to clock in or just a simple pin. Boom, they're done for the day. They can go ahead and clock out for breaks. They can check their schedule on here. 
lots of fun features we have. And I should note that with either the iPad or the mobile device, they can clock in when those devices are not online. So we work, you know, of course, in many different industries. And so let's say someone, there's a power outage in the building and you can't get the Wi-Fi or there's a storm, whatever the case, the hard drive of that device will capture that timestamp. And so the next time that device is back online, we go ahead and boom, we're, we're in business. So with the mobile device, I highly encourage every employer, every conversation I'm in to have their employees download it, even if they're salaried, because a lot of them will say, well, they don't need to clock in and clock out, they're salaried. But as you'll see here, um, when we go through the clock in, they can either take a picture of themselves or they have to be next to whatever station they're starting at today, um, or they can just simply use their username and password and that you can, they can just hit the clock in button. It's up to you guys. But um, when they use the app, this bottom panel down here is really helpful for everybody. Again, the salaried individuals as well. So first I'll start off by saying we can get as big brother as you need. So that's really three things with regard to the location of your employees. So the first is gonna be geofencing. So we will have a notification sent out if somebody clocks in from outside of the geofence and you can map and draw whatever shape around whatever building or buildings need be. You can then track their location exactly when they, they kind of go hand in hand. So that'll be geotagging to know where they've clocked in from. And then the last one is the continuous tagging. I don't really know if that's really gonna, gonna meet the needs of the industry here, but we do have that if need be. Same thing, we can transfer between jobs, we can transfer between locations, rates of pay, world is your oyster. And then same thing with breaks, if you need to have those breaks be programmed and you simply want an attestation, you don't want anyone clocking in and clocking out, cool, you can do that. But if you want them to choose from a drop down of either that 10 minute paid break or their unpaid hour for lunch, you can program any of those types into. This bottom panel, so schedule, this again is going to be more for hourly, but if you have the concept of getting ships covered, swapping them, we have that available. That is something that can be turned on, turned off. Again, it's really going to be through that implementation process that we dig down into the individual practices needs where we ask them, okay, do you want this feature? Do you not want it turned on? Does this seem appealing to you? Does it not? So I've been using this saying for four years now, but it's like you're thousand piece Lego kit where you can kind of build what you need. Maybe you only need 152 pieces and that works for you. You'll have the others should you need them when you need them. When we take a look at the timesheets, this right here, again, it's the employer gets to dictate whether or not an employee can correct their own timesheet, whether it's sent to a manager or they have hands off, no uh, authority to do so. And then this is my favorite right here. So this is the, um, the timesheet where you'll see vacation and sick time. So at any point in time, maybe you're sitting on the couch, you're sitting with your family and it's a Friday night at nine o'clock and you say, okay, let's, let's take that trip to Hawaii that we really wanted to be, uh, that we really wanted to take for the last few years, right? Let's finally do that. I don't have to be in the office. I don't have to call my boss. I don't have to call the HR lady or guy. I can take a look at my balance history. I can then request it right then and there. It's gonna to go to the appropriate person and then they'll approve it as needed. Lastly, we do have a messaging system. It's similar to text message. It's similar to Google chat, Slack, anything like that. We wanted to make sure that we had our own as well to meet the needs of anyone that wanted to use it. What's nice is that you can say, hey, here's a manager chat, here's the employees. We can distinguish between different chats. Let me show you what it looks like from an employer's perspective. So this is everybody's favorite screen right here because it's an in the now live dashboard. So I see people who are running late for shifts on the left-hand side, the really important stuff, right? Brian is clocked in from McDonald's again. I got to get on him. Barry Gordon is approaching overtime. He's already had 642 hours of overtime this year and it's killing us. We got to send him a message so that he doesn't hit overtime because now we have this cool system in place that'll alert us prior to the overtime actually occurring. It'll alert him, his manager, whoever you decide that needs to be. Unpublished shifts, et cetera. Right when we look here in the middle, these are things that are important as well. They might not be as time sensitive as on the left, but we see time sheets and time off requests that are waiting for approval. The nice thing is we're not only notifying you in the screen, but we're allowing you to remedy each situation by the options below that you'll see.
right hand side, we can see who's clocked in under what job, when they clocked in, who's on a break, who's off. And it's just a quick at a glance screen. So I really, really love the screen. And um, it's another fan favorite, which is what I like to show during the demo because I know we don't have too much time. Um, let me show you the schedule. So um, a lot of people I know have scheduling components. This feeds directly into everything. So if you're able to, we've had people say, well, I want to keep our schedule because it's so particular to our business. And you can definitely go ahead and do that. You won't get things like the alerts. You won't know when someone's approaching over time because it does have to be coupled with ours. But I really encourage people to maybe try ours, keep theirs for an extra month if they need and really see the difference and really see how it just really interacts with the rest of the software. So what you're seeing right here right now are different colors. It's probably the first thing that stands out. You can color co coordinate anything as you see it, as you need. Then you'll see some outline shapes. Uh, those rectangles are really, let's just say I'm a schedule manager and I'm in the schedule right now. Those represent an unpublished shift. You'll see the gray areas. It's either static unavailability or that's someone that's taking vacation or PTO or out sick. And then what's really nice is I can take a look at these open shifts. I can drag and drop them. I can say, oh, Jane Bayer, I need her in the whole week. Um, again, see these are showing up as outlined because it has not been published. I can go into a shift, I can change it, I can add different things, I can add shift notes. Hey, be prepared to work late. Um, we know John, John always takes forever, he's always late, but he's a good client, customer, whatever you want to say. Um, just lots of fun features. The other nice thing too is we can, from a budgeting perspective, see right here the dollar amount via each individual employee. We can see it per day, we can see what we look like as a forecasted week. Of course, all of this can be masked depending on who's in the schedule. If you don't want employees seeing other employees, totally get that. The other nice really thing I want to mention with the schedule is that we do allow um, for templates. So if you say, hey, we're in office, there's four of us, everybody comes in at eight o'clock, we leave at 4.30, cool. We can have that template that can be applied week over week, month over month. And if you ever need to change it, that's when you assume this role and you'll go in and change it. You publish it. Maybe you only want to let the people know the change who have had the changes. That's all you want to notify. Go for it. That's all you need to do. And then it's now been published. A couple of things I want to show you um, before we get into payroll. So the payrolls and code section. This is this is your place where you want to be when it comes to compliance. We will update any state, county, and federal specific payrolls and codes as it relates things like meal break rules you're going to see california um and again this is just a demo we don't have everything loaded in it but um rest breaks same thing holidays if you have your own pay codes if you have your own premiums i have a lot of people that say well our work week starts on a sunday it doesn't start in your traditional monday or you know this subset of, of employees accrues at a much higher rate because they have more tenure we can configure as many options as you need and we're happy to do so for you um my favorite, my personal favorite on the time and attendance platform is the notification section. I'm guilty. I'm a millennial. I'm on my phone probably more than I should be. But what's really nice is that we have the capability to notify employees via their mobile device and email. And when I say via their mobile device, it's going to be through the application. It's not going to be like a text message that pops on the screen. Just depending on whether or not they um, have the app, they'll, they'll see it through the app. But hey, you're approaching overtime. Again, we don't want to hit that 700th hour of overtime this year. Um, maybe someone's not clocked in yet. You know, Suzanne always forgets to clock in. She's just chatting by the water cooler all day. And we want to put a stop to that, right? We want to make sure that she's she's clocking in. Maybe I want to send the new calendar or the new schedule out every week um, with a weekly schedule reminder. Time off approved. It would be so cool if I'm just sitting at home on you know, a Tuesday night and I see, oh, cool, my boss just approved my time off. Let's get planning for that vacation, right? So tons of different notifications. You can turn them off. You can turn them on. If you don't like the time limit or time frame, you can go ahead and um, have that be edited as well. If you want 30 minutes over the threshold, but so many options there. I love it. And I want to make note right here. I, I know you're probably looking at this like, oh, that's a lot when we look at this. This administration tab, will someone will walk you through it, and it's really just a maintenance tab, right? So what you're going to be seeing on a daily basis is that dashboard, the schedule, 
payroll if you have it with us, or any reports you want to extract, and then um, if you're uh, connecting with the, the journal. So let's get into payroll because I know I want to leave at least 10 minutes for Q&A because I'm going to hurry. So when the beauty of integrating time and attendance and the payroll product is that we will start a pay run. We'll take a look at everything that's in the time and attendance system. So we'll say, okay, cool. We have regular pay over time. Looks good. I'm going to hit next. And now a screen prompts me with what might prevent me from running a perfect payroll. So I see Maria Hernandez. She's missing a punch. Oh, silly Maria. She always misses that punch. Unapproved timesheet. Cindy, we know that Cindy worked whatever. So maybe we'll hit next or maybe we'll just go in and fix them. We are presented with the previous period compared to the current period with regard to labor. So you'll see there's a $210 difference this time. You can, of course, download this to CSV. This is really going to help you if you want to maintain the existing payroll platform that you already have right now and simply use our time and attendance or if you just want to have it on record. But if not and you're using ours, boom, you've sent it to payroll. You now get into the payroll module. You're able to, um, this will just show you if you have any outstanding data that needs to be completed. But now you're in the time entry. You get to see all those employees. You'll actually go to the process payroll screen. You are right here, preview process payroll, and then you go ahead and process it. So we give you a lot of chances to make sure you have your payroll right. If something happens, you can always give us a call. We'll go ahead and edit that and, and audit it if you need to as well. But um, on the payroll section, what I like to show is the clean dashboard. So you'll see if there are any bank holidays coming up, anniversaries, birthdays. So it's nice to know that, right? We want to take care of our staff and be in the know and at least wish them something um, when their anniversary or birthday arises. If you do want to order check stock, you can go ahead and do that. Any updated forms, let's say, oh my gosh, there's a brand new I-9 that just came out in 2023. I want to make sure I have a few paper copies in hand. You can go ahead and access those. You can rest assured that we will have already uploaded those from a digital perspective. But again, here's always what you need on file. You'll see who your sales rep, that rep that's being paid residually is. You'll also see who your dedicated payroll rep is too. And then as you go through everything, you're going to set up your client name, location, all that fun stuff. Um, last thing I want to show you in here is the reports. So right here, you'll see that you can date range the reports, which I think is just, it's crucial, right? Maybe you have a totally different calendar year or work week or whatnot, and you don't want to be confined to just your calendar weeks and days. Um, you can go ahead and date range those. Um, you can facil facilitate direct deposit, just really easy, nice and clean on the, the payroll side. Last thing I want to show you is the HR. So there are two different types of HR, two levels, I guess you can say. There's one that's more of a baby HR, and it gives you a more of a proactive approach combined with proactive tools where you're able to see any laws, topics, any type of learning that you want your employees to go through, tools, which would include a handbook wizard, but really just a proactive approach to um, all of the HR that you would need for the business. And so this is really for people that are really keen on HR. They kind of know their stuff, but maybe they want to I know too, a lot of people will just use the HR for a couple of months, get everything in line, and then you can leave the HR portion. The more robust version is where you do get access to that HR generalist who will work with you side by side to create and build that the handbook of your dreams. Uh, not your nightmares, right? Not, not not your nightmares, your dreams. So like so that no one is suing you, nothing is going wrong. Um, and the, their SHRM certified will be in your industry. And so um, you can contact them at any point in time that you need. Um, you'll see just a lot of things with customizing documents, just everything HR that you really need can be found in the HR platform. Last thing before we get into any questions. So this is my favorite feature of everything. It's been out for about three months now. And this is our beefed up, really nice, all encompassing mobile app. So what I showed you before was the time and attendance portion of the app, but we've been working really hard for a few years actually to release something that is good for everyone. Someone who only has payroll, maybe someone who has all of the products. So for any employee, they can go ahead, sign in, log into their app, You'll see any active messages, any actions required. And this is where I told you someone can go in and say, yep, I'm over Bank of America. I really want to upload my city account. I'm excited to get going. And they don't have to bother 
Tyler, the HR guy, you know, they don't have to worry about, you know, all, a form, a paper form, getting this sign and this stamp. There's no more of that. I think what at least one person, if not everyone on this call is going to love is the fact that W-2s can be retrieved on their form. Of course, we're going to get the paper ones mailed, but they will have the access to W-2s and even paychecks. So, hey, I'm sitting at a car dealership. I'm ready to go ahead and buy a car. I, I, I need, you know, six months, six weeks, however many I need of paychecks. I can just access this on my phone. I can go ahead and send it and have it printed. A um, lot of nice features. We're so happy with this. This is, is everything that everyone's been asking for for the last year. So we're really happy. And this is perfect timing that we have rolled it out now. I know there's about eight, nine minutes left. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and kick it back over to Kara, I believe, um, for anyone who has questions. Let's see. There's a couple. Okay, so, all right, cool. So there are no questions. I hope I answered them all for you, and I really hope that you got something out of this. If anything, learn about that work opportunity tax credit. Make sure that your employees are doing the best work, you're finding the best people, and if we can be of any aid to you at any point throughout the upcoming year, month, whatever, please don't hesitate to um, give us a call. We will be looking to work with Practice Perfect on hopefully making some integrations that are useful in the future within the next year or two. So stay tuned and happy holidays, everyone. Thank you.